If you're feeling overwhelmed by all the dreams that you have and you've got no idea where to start, this episode is for you. Let's be honest, if you are feeling overwhelmed or stressed or anxious or confused about your goals and your dreams, chances are you're probably not taking any action. Or if you are, it's probably not the right action. In today's show, I'm going to give you three steps to take, the first three, so you know exactly where you need to start. And I'll give you a hint. It is about doing less, not more. By the end of this episode, you're going to know how to get started, even when you have a lot of dreams and even if they're really big ones, even if you have no idea how you'll achieve them. So get ready to say goodbye to the confusion, the overwhelm, the stress, and say hello to chasing any and all of your dreams. Welcome to the Golden Girls Podcast, where we believe you can have it all. I'm your host, Lisa Michaud, and I'm spilling tangible tips, goal-getting strategies, and real-life stories to inspire you to tackle your biggest dreams. You're a woman who knows you're made for more. Get ready to leave the excuses and self-doubt behind by being vulnerable, sharing your truth, and having honest conversations so you can succeed on your terms. Together, we'll set goals you'll actually achieve by staying motivated, having fun, and building a community of women empowering women. It's time to tap into your best self, get confident, and truly have it all. Golden Girl, let's dive in. Welcome back to another episode of the Golden Girls podcast. Today, we're talking about how to get clarity if you have lots of dreams or heck, even just one really big one, and no idea where to start. I'm going to share with you three guiding principles that you need to follow when chasing really any dreams so that you can tackle and achieve them with more confidence, clarity, and most of all, sanity, because let's be honest, I think we all need some of that. Most importantly today, I'm also going to share with you three steps you need to take right now so you can get clarity to know exactly where to start on the path to your big dreams. I'm going to give you what you should be focusing on for the next 30 days to get your dreams off the ground. Before we dive in, I want to say something really important. I want to make sure that I tell you this loud and clear. There is nothing wrong with having a lot of dreams. There's nothing wrong with having big dreams. In fact, I encourage it. I am someone who lives and believes that anything is possible. And so I want you to hear me loud and clear on this. The problem is not having big dreams or having a lot of them. No, 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 not at all. All I want to do through this episode is help guide you in figuring out how to take those dreams that can sometimes feel overwhelming and quiet that inner critic and help give you a bit of a roadmap and a path to take so that you can move forward in a way that feels empowering and makes you feel confident and gives you the clarity that you need. So let's just say that. There's nothing wrong with big dreams. I want you to have dreams. I want you to have a lot of dreams. All those things are so great. And that's really, truly one of the most important things in my life for you to hear and for you to really appreciate about what I'm sharing. Now, if you are someone who has never given yourself permission to to have big dreams and goals, well then, I got two things I want to share with you first before we dive in here. Like I said, I really believe in having permission to dream big, so I've created a couple things to guide you along the way. First of all, there are some questions that I share with my clients and my students on a regular basis to get their energy going, to get their wheels turning and their hearts shining with new ideas. So I've put together all of these 10 10 questions, the best 10 questions that I know in a special playbook here for you. And it's at lisamichaud.com forward slash uncover your dreams. And of course, I'll link to it in the show notes. But if you're someone who is like, okay, I never really had big dreams uh, or dreams and it sounds like they're just overwhelming, which is not really the case for everyone and not it won't be the case for you by the end of this episode. But I want you to take some time to really uncover your dreams and have them out in the world and in your heart and on paper and out there so that you feel really good about having and living your best possible life. So make sure you grab the 10 questions to uncover your dreams playbook there and go through those questions and see what comes up. Now, the second thing I want to share here, if you're someone who doesn't have goals or big dreams or dreams period, well, go back to episode one. One of the challenges I issue in that episode is the 100 dreams challenge. You can listen to episode one. I've got the link in the show notes. And there's also a little playbook there too, lisamayshow.com forward slash 100 dreams. And of course, that's in the show notes too. I want you guys to start out with big dreams and know that anything is possible for you life. And both the 10 questions to uncover your dreams and the 100 dreams challenge are designed to give you permission to dream as big as you freaking want because it is your life and you are in charge. So let's make sure that 
before you go any further in this episode, you've got some dreams. You've got things to go on. And a lot of you may not be feeling overwhelmed, and that's okay too. But for the women who's got a lot of dreams and you're, you're feeling overwhelmed, this is for you. So let's keep going here. Now, I am definitely a woman with a lot of dreams. And frankly, I do believe that everybody's got dreams within us. It's whether we give ourselves the allowance and the space to really, frankly, talk about them. If you have a lot of dreams, you're in the right place. And I think it's amazing that you have the courage to even have them and to share them, whether it's just in your soul or on paper or with other people. So that's amazing. Now, if your big dreams are making you paralyzed and overwhelmed, you have no idea where to start, this is what you need to hear. I see you, my friend. I see you trying to raise a family, start a nonprofit, write a book. You want to take a year-long sabbatical around the world, create a passive income stream in your life, run a marathon, start a podcast, etc., etc., etc. Whew! It is okay to have all of these dreams, but if you're feeling overwhelmed and not sure where to start, or you're frantically trying to do everything, or if you're in analysis paralysis trying to figure out what order you should do all the things and how to make it all happen, it is time to slow down and stop. I want to share with you my three guiding principles for any goals, and you're going to hear these a lot, um, but I want it to be loud and clear, especially when we're talking about dreams that right now may feel overwhelming. So the first principle is that it's a marathon, not a sprint. You are not going to be able to do all of the things. One of the most common mistakes that we see is that people underestimate what they can do in five years, but overestimate what they can do in one year. What ends up happening is we try and do all the things all at once and we just end up getting burnt out. So I want you to keep in mind with all of your goals that it is a marathon, not a sprint. In five years, you can be living a radically different life. And in 10 years, oh my goodness gracious, anything is possible for you. The way I want to share this is with a wine glass analogy. And it is, you know, if all of us that are listening here, you know, hundreds, thousands, maybe tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of us are in the room listening to this conversation and I'm trying to fill up all of your wine glasses with one bottle of wine. Well, let me tell you, if there were any more than about six people in the room, you guys would be pretty mad at me for not filling up your wine glasses. This is the equivalent of what I see people doing with the time in a week or a year even. You're trying to fill up all the different goals and all the cups and all the wine glasses with just one bottle of wine and one amount of time. Think about your life and your goals as a marathon and not a sprint, and that should automatically release that pressure from you right here, right now. Second thing I want you to know, I want you to let go of the expectation that you need to have it all figured out. As you move along the path of your goal, more of the steps will become clear. You don't need to know all the steps to get started. You just need to get started. The third principle, I want you to hear me loud and clear here, my friend. Mindset matters more than strategy. Mindset is everything. And I'm such a believer in this. And you're going to hear me talk about this like a broken record. But this especially matters when it comes to your dreams. Because there are a million different strategies you could use no matter what your goal is. Let me give you an example here. Let's think about finding a life partner, a great husband or wife. Think about the different ways you could do that. Think about the different ways other people have done that. Some people meet at the bar. Some people meet on Bumble. Some went to high school together, university together. Some ended up working together. Some met through friends or on blind dates. All people meet their partners in different ways and that's okay. It doesn't make one better or one right or one wrong. Now, think about how we proceed to decide that this is our partner. You know, some people move in together right away. Some people end up dating for years before they move in together. Some elope within months and get married right away. And some people never end up getting married. There is no one way to find a life partner or to keep a life partner. There's no one way in relationships or really anything in life. What matters more than anything, that the strategy is like something that I think we get so caught up in and it really makes no difference. What matters is your ability to show up, your ability to keep going, your ability to focus on what matters and hold your dreams in your heart and honor them with your time and attention. All right, so if you're on board with those, and I hope you are, those principles are going to help you any day with any goal that you've got. I wanted to put those out there because I think they're especially relevant when it comes to big goals. Now, let's talk about how to get clarity if you have a lot of dreams and no idea where to start. Here are the first three steps to take. Number one. You need to decide what is most important to you. 
If you only had one or two years left to live, what would you focus on? What matters the most to you? I want you to remember, there are a lot of different ways you can achieve your dream and a million different orders that you could do it in. For example, you could start with a short-term goal that maybe leads to a long-term goal. Let's say you wanted to, your long-term goal was be to start a nonprofit. One way you could do it is to start by getting a promotion at work or a raise at work and or maybe building a side hustle so that you then have the money to start your nonprofit. Some people may decide to start with that long-term goal and just create the nonprofit and quit everything and build it right away to find funders and start in that direction. There's no right or wrong answer here. The question is, how do you want to do it? What goal comes first? What goal is most important to you? I feel like this is where most people get stuck in this analysis paralysis, trying to figure out what is the best way. And for you, I want to say that the best way is how you want to do it. So let me give you a few suggestions on how you could get some information because ultimately the decision is going to come down to you. Now, here's a few things you could do to get started and figuring out what is the best way to do it. Well, you could research what have other people done? How have other people created what you wanted to do? What order did they do things in? You might decide to interview people who have achieved what you want to. You could also read biographies or listen to podcasts of people that have done it. One of my favorite things to do is to mastermind with a few other great friends and colleagues, getting their input, their suggestions, or heck, you know, even their coaching. Like they can often see things in me and notice when I'm obviously really passionate and excited about a topic and I don't even realize it myself. And that can help give you the information on what goal you might want to start with and what which one you really want to start with. Another idea, Brooke Castillo shares this, it's called super thinking. Literally go somewhere quiet for an hour and ask yourself the question. What is the first dream I will make a reality? That's it. And see what comes up there. Or ask yourself another question that I love from the book, The One Thing. What's the one thing that if I did it, everything else would be easier or less relevant? Ask yourself that question. So if you're going to do super thinking, no distractions, journal, write it out, see what comes up for you. So those are a few ways that you could start to figure out which one is most important and how you want to go. But I want to say this and make it loud and clear to you. Like I said, there's a million different ways you could do this, a million orders. What matters is how do you want to do it? What's the first dream? What's the most important dream you want to make a reality? If you only had a year or two left to live, what would you do? Which one would you start with? Now, I'm going to give you a challenge here. You could be stuck in this, and maybe you already have been. Hey, let's be honest. Maybe you've already been stuck contemplating this for a few months or a few years. I want giving you a time limit. From the time you're hearing this episode, look at your calendar, my friend, and you've got 30 days, 30 days to research if you need to, to interview some people, to chat with some close friends, do a mastermind, ask a mentor, or do some super thinking, okay? Figure out where in your heart, where do you want to start and decide within the next 30 days. So that is your first action. Decide what dream you will crush first and know where you're going to start. Okay, step number two. So once you know what your goal is, what dream you're going to chase first, I want you to get real super clear on what your yes is. Focus here is so key. And yeah, I'm going to talk a lot about this in future episodes. I'm a huge believer in having a focus goal and knowing what your yeses are. When I talk about knowing what your yes is, I want you to understand what your dream is and get crystal clear about what you want to say yes to. Why does it matter? Connect to that feeling, to that emotion of your goal. Like how is it going to feel to achieve it and why do you want it so badly? What is it, the impact that you're creating? How is How does that make you feel? Because if you're not connected to your goal emotionally, it's not a good goal. And if you don't understand what your yes is really strongly, it's going to be really hard to say no. So I want you to visualize If you got to make a vision board or have a picture of it on your desktop, do that. Have real clarity about what that yes is, what you are going all in on, my friend. Now, I talk about focus and I'll talk about it more, but I'm a big believer in one focus goal at a time. I'll give you a little bit of a caveat. I do believe this depends on the season of your life. So, for example, a few years ago, my capacity was quite a bit higher. I was in a new job. And I joined a leadership program and I was planning our wedding. I could do all those things pretty well because, well, the big kicker is I didn't have a baby. I did have a lot of things on my plate and I handled them really well. 
That being said, I still had to say no to a few other things. I said no to another half marathon because I knew I just didn't have the time and the energy to put into it. So now fast forward a couple years later, I have a new baby, a new business, and a husband that's what works away for a lot of the time. There's not a lot of capacity for other things. So this has changed for me in the season of my life. You know, before I was able to start a new job and be in a leadership program and plan a wedding, right now I really only can focus on my business and my baby and my family. Like that's kind of about it. So here's what I can say. If you're already feeling overwhelmed, you cannot outwork yourself out of this problem. Let me say that again. If you're already feeling overwhelmed, you cannot outwork yourself out of this, okay? Like, that's not the solution. All the productivity strategies in the world will not work if you're working on the wrong things. I'm going to encourage you to go all in on one thing. If you have the time, if you like literally have nothing else to do, you're bored, you can maybe tackle more than one, okay, I'll give you two goals. But you better be doing a really exceptional job of both of those things and it is so much more powerful to do a really great job of one or two things than trying to do five things in a mediocre and slow way. When you focus, your momentum is going to build and that's what it takes to really make a dream come true. It's going to take focus and consistent action that's going to show you the way. Having focus and getting crystal clear about your yes and knowing what that is, like that is how everything big has happened in the world. That is how Facebook got built. That is how we put a man on the moon. That is how Oprah built her media empire because she knew she needed to focus. It's really how accomplishments happen on every single level. So I want you to get real clear about what you're saying yes to. So here's your second action. Be clear about what you're saying yes to. Connect to the emotion. What is it that you really want? What is achieving this dream? How is it going to make you feel? And what is it going to give to your life? Focus. Pick one or two maximum things. Because if you're honest about your capacity and what you really want, doing one thing well, maybe two. I'm going to say one. Doing one thing really well is going to move you leaps and bounds ahead of trying to do five things mediocre. All right, the third step to achieving a goal, a big dream, when you have no idea where to start, is to clear your calendar. And we're going to do this literally and mentally. We're going to do it in the past and we're going to do it moving forward. Let's talk about the past. You can actually learn a lot from where you've been. I'm going to challenge you to do something called a calendar audit. I want you to think about the last one or two years and list out your major accomplishments, your proudest memories. Think about what are the happiest things that come to your mind from the last one to two years. Then I want you to open your calendar, whether it is a Google calendar or a physical planner that you have, I want you to open it up and do your audit. This is where you look at how you spent the last one to two years and ask yourself some really critical questions. Where did your time go? Where was your happiest time spent? What were the actions, the things that you did that got you those major accomplishments and those proud moments that you listed before you opened your calendar? Who were you with when you were your happiest? Then I want you to ask the opposite questions. What was a waste of time? More importantly, what was a waste of your energy? What did you not enjoy spending your time on? What did you spend time on that got you no results and no accomplishments? Who did you not enjoy being with? These are really important questions. With the knowledge from your calendar audit, you're going to mentally know what was great and what wasn't. That is what we want to now take it into the future. The best way to honor a dream in your heart is to give it the time in your calendar. So now what you've got to do is look forward and give your calendar and give your dream the time it deserves. I want you to First, think about how much time you need, like really. That's going to depend on how big your dream is or how where you see your goal fitting into your existing life. For my business, I am able to give it the time now that I have childcare, which is amazing. It took 19 months, but that's another story for another bottle of wine. I aim for about 35 to 50 hours a week, depending on what's happening. That time is blocked each and every week, and I'm here for it. If your goal was to, say, create a new circle of friends in a new community, you may need 5 to 10 hours a week for that. If you want to run a marathon, you might want to put aside 20 hours a week. If you want to get back into reading and let's say you've got young kids, maybe you just put aside 5 to 10 minutes a day. 
It really depends on how much time you need and how fast you want your goal to move forward and what season of life that you're in. So decide on how much time you need and get really honest about yourself on that. The next thing you're going to do is block the time. Now, there's this meme that I saw that just, I think, sums up adult life. It said, quote, I feel like being an adult is just saying the next few weeks are really busy for me, but then it slows down for the rest of my life. If you can relate, oh my gosh, you're not the only one. I saw this and I laughed because I feel like I say this to people all of the time. So great meme and also great tip. If you feel like the next couple weeks are busy, but then things slow down, great. Look ahead a few weeks and then block the time. That will be easy. From like 99.9% of people, that's going to be pretty easy. If you look a few weeks ahead, you'll find the time and start to block it. Physically put the blocks of time in your calendar. Again, whether it's digital or physical, make sure it's in there. Now, if you can't find the time for your goals in a month or two out, you need a redesign of your life. And I cannot sugarcoat this. You probably will in some parts of your life need to redesign. And if you've got a really big dream, it's probably going to require a major overhaul. Any goal that you want, it's going to require you to change something. Otherwise, you'd already have it, right? What it comes down to is you changing your mindset, changing your habits, and how you show up. That comes down to changing how you spend your time and where you spend your time. This might mean that you need to make a major overhaul. It might mean having a conversation with your partner. It might mean changing work schedules or expectations. It might mean outsourcing things, whether it's at work or at home. And I'm pretty sure it's going to mean saying no. Now, I started with yeses. Step number two was knowing your yeses. I want you to, in this step, also get clear on your no's. I wanted to start with yes because I think the yes is always a little easier or maybe that's just me because I'm a people pleaser. That's what I think. But the no's are equally important. When you know your yeses, you can understand that anything else, by the way, once they're in your calendar, you're going to see that any time that you say yes to something else, you're going to say a no to your goals and a no to your dream. Let's give you some examples here. So if you, for example, said you wanted to feel mental clarity, you wanted energy, so you've put aside time in your calendar to meditate, you put time in there to do your meal prep on a Sunday, all of a sudden you may have to say no to some pizza parties or you may have to say no to staying up until 1 a.m. Netflix binging or it might mean saying no to Sunday brewery crawls all day if that's the time that you put aside for your meal prep. And I know those things sound harsh and those are like Netflix binging and brewery tours. Like those things are a lot more fun. Pizza parties. We need those sometimes. But when it's in your calendar and you see what your yeses are, you have that time for your goal and your dream. Anytime anything threatens to take away that time, you get to have a real honest conversation with yourself and ask, am I willing to say no to my dream? Am I willing to say no to that? And my friend, only you can make that choice. It is probably going to mean saying no to things that you want to do sometimes And it's also going to mean saying no to what other people want too. I don't know about you, but I get a lot of requests from people to, quote, pick my brain uh, or they want me to volunteer or help on different initiatives. I also get people that will message me about, quote, an exciting business opportunity on Facebook, even though I haven't talked to them in years. Maybe you can relate to that. that. I think that happens a lot to most of us these days. When these things happen, we always have to check in and ask, you know, is this serving my goal? Is this serving what I want to do? Now, I'm not saying that we never help people or that we don't put our time or we don't volunteer, but if those things are taking away and you're not living a life you want to and you're feeling overwhelmed by all the things you want to do but you're not actually getting the time to do them, you've got to create the space for it. You have to decide. Remember, any yes that you say that is not about your goal or your dream is actually a no to you. It's It's a no to your goals. It's a no to what you want. No one but you gets to decide that trade-off. I'm a people pleaser. I find it really hard to say no, and I still struggle with this. I think I've probably got about three things in my inbox right now that I need to say no to. So believe me when I say I don't have this all figured out. But I did hear this the other day from Michael Hyatt, and I thought this was really great. This is his yes, no, yes formula to saying no in a loving way. So he starts out with a yes, he puts a no in the middle, and he ends it with a yes. So here's an example. So let's say somebody reaches out to you and or to me and says, like, I want to pick your brain. I want to start this business or whatever it is. Um, here's an example of the yes, no, yes. You know, I start with a yes. So, wow, congratulations on wanting to start your business. A lot of people dream about it and never do it. I, it's been one of the most rewarding things I've ever done in my life. Now, here comes the no. I'm afraid I'll have to decline lunch with you. 
I have a life rule. If I haven't had time for lunch with my mom, I don't have time for others and I really owe my mom lunch right now. Then you end with another yes. So here is a link to a blog post that might help or a resource that I know that might help you out. I wish you all the best. That yes, no, yes is a really simple and beautiful framework to, for you to say no in a really positive and loving way that I think keeps our relationship strong because that's important and we don't want to burn every bridge along the way. But it also keeps your dedication to your goals stronger, which is what I want you to do. So I hope that that helps you there. I thought that was such a great framework and I know it's been helping me as I'm crafting my nose. So um, if you're a fellow people pleaser, <laughs> hope that you love that too. Give that a try and let me know how it goes. Okay, so no matter how big your dreams are, I do know this to be true. You are absolutely capable of making them happen. Just to recap here, I'm going to remind you of the three important principles of goals. Number one, it's a marathon, not a sprint. No matter what dream you've got, it's going to take time. Your life is a marathon, not a sprint. Number two, you don't need to have it all figured out. Some of the steps you're never going to predict and things will become clear as you get going. Number three, your mindset matters over strategy. Keep going. Get back up. That's what matters. Now, you've also got the first three steps. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, here's where you're going to start. Number one, you're going to decide what's most important to you. You're going to give yourself 30 days from today and make that happen. That gives you time to do the research, to interview people, to talk to your mastermind friends, to work with your coach, to do some thinking and reflecting on your own. And my friend, if you do this 30 days, I want you to take no more than the next 30 days to decide what you're going to focus on. And when you do, I want you to declare it on social media and tag me or at least send me a message because I would love to see and I would love to cheer you all along the way. I, nothing lights me up more than seeing you guys make your dreams a reality and just setting the intention is huge. So please, please, please tag me. I would love to hear this. All right, step number two is knowing your yes. Like what are you saying yes to and being really clear and focused on that? What is the emotion that that goal is going to give you? What is it that you want to feel as you're achieving this? Decide on one or two things max. Be really focused and know your yes so that saying no gets a lot easier. Number three, make time for your goals. That means looking back and doing a real and honest calendar audit about how you've been spending your time so then you can look forward about how you want your time to look. You're going to get clear on how much time it's going to take each and every week, and you're going to block that time in your calendar. Make it non-negotiable. Once it is in your calendar, going forward every single week, it's going to make it a lot easier to see when another request comes in, you know, the happy hour or the brewery call or uh, Netflix binging. It's going to help you see right away what the yes, the, your big dream, your goal, what you're maybe losing out on. And if it's something that does come in, a request that does support your big dream, you can say yes because you've already got the time for it. So that's it. Not knowing where to start is no longer an excuse, my friend. It is time to get started. I want to end with this. I give you, not that you need it, but I want you to hear this. You have permission to get it wrong. It might not be perfect. But if you never get started, you're never going to know. Progress matters so much more than perfection. Choose a goal. Decide on one. Know your yes and focus on how it's going to make you feel. Give yourself permission to say no to everything else. Then get it in your calendar. The best way to honor a dream in your heart is to give it time in your calendar. If you do that, you will be on track to chase your dream and make it a reality. No guilt, no overwhelm, and no more excuses. You have seriously got everything you need to get started today. I am cheering you along every step of the way. You've got an amazing life to live. You've got big dreams and you matter. Go chase those dreams. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Golden Girls Podcast. I truly appreciate it. And if you enjoyed it, please take a screenshot, share it on social, and tag me. I would love to thank you and share it myself. Don't forget to subscribe too. You will be the first one to find out when new episodes are available and find out about bonus episodes too. So that's all for today. Go light up those dreams. I am so excited for you and I know that no matter what is in your heart, it is possible for you. 
Thank you so much for listening. If something spoke to you, send me a message by sharing this episode and tagging me on social media. If you know someone who would love to hear this episode, please share it with them too. Because I love surprises, make sure you subscribe to the Golden Girls podcast today. It's the only way to find out about bonus surprise episodes and make sure you don't miss a single beat on your golden journey. Thanks again for listening and I will talk to you in the next episode of the Golden Girls podcast.